Hey guys, so today will be a little bit of an unconventional video, more podcast style. So if you're kind of doing things around the house, feel free to just listen in on this conversation with a fellow Microsoft software engineer. So Eric is actually a self-taught developer, so he didn't go the traditional route, which is getting your bachelor's degree. So that's why I think it's super interesting to hear this conversation. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I just kind of went for a run. But the first question that I wanted to ask Eric is, how did he get into his software engineering journey? And how did he decide to go work at Microsoft? Now, my journey to become a software engineer started around late 2018. I went to a couple semesters in universities for computer science, but I didn't really find it very helpful. So then in 2019, I decided to go full in on self-teaching myself, full stack development and programming. And in 2020, that's when I started working at a startup as a software engineer, a full stack software engineer. And that startup didn't really go very well. So I moved on to a different startup, medium sized company called Clear Renewables as a software engineer, as a full stack software engineer. And in November of 2021, that's the time that I started to officially work at Microsoft as a software engineer. Okay, so that was really great to hear. My next question is, how did you decide to go the self-taught route? And would you recommend that over going to something like a boot camp or even just getting your bachelor's degree? So how did I decide to go to the self-taught route? What motivates me? Well, basically what happened was I, like I mentioned, I started self-taught in 2019. Before that, I was really lost. I thought about getting to health science to be a doctor or pharmacist. But the thing about being a doctor is that you have to take four years of pre-medical school. And after that, you had to take an exam called MCAT to get into medical school. And after medical school, you have to do two years of residential, which is total about 10 years. And maybe pharmacists, maybe a little less, maybe 60 credits of post-secondary school and then you can be able to get into pharmaceutical science um, you know major which is another four years right so two years of 60 credits plus another four years of uh, pharmace pharmaceutical science which is total about six years so at that time i really didn't want to wait that long and it's also very risky because you know the admission uh, ratio and all that kind of things um and the other part is you know what kind of jobs can you get right after 60 credits or after you know four years of pre-medical school right so i was really uh so it really made me reconsider my options so so what happened was I basically came across computer science. But the thing about computer science is that I didn't take any computer science courses in high school and I didn't have any idea about what computer science is. So what happened was, you know, I did some research and I take the leap of faith to transfer my major to computer science. Um, but after a couple semesters, I realized that I don't really see a connection between learning about what I'm learning in school compared to what's out there like building web applications or building full stack applications or building backend servers. Um, working with cloud infrastructures and so on. I didn't really see a connection there. So what happened was after a couple semesters, I basically tried to take some courses online and see if I can be able to self-taught myself computer science or software development and try to see if I can be able to end up with a six-figure income um, working as a software engineer. At that time, I didn't really aim for big tech companies at all. So what happened was after tutorials, after tutorials, I realized that this is something that I can be able to achieve. And what happened was, I again, I take, another leap of faith to into the self-taught route and continue down this path. So what I recommend this over getting a traditional degree or going through bootcamp, well, I think I need to be very careful when I say this because I have two brothers who are younger than me. I don't want to influence them too much, but it is a trend right now that a lot of people are not going to school, but still able to get a software engineer job. It is true. But one thing that I want to influence is to question about learning and be able to think, are the things that I'm learning right now useful? Can I be able to apply the things that I'm learning to doing something real to solve a problem in the world. Okay, next question. It's kind of awkward to just yell on the road to the camera right now, but um, wait, what was the next question? Okay, so what are some pros and cons to your job? And this doesn't have to be Microsoft specific. It can just be related to software engineering. Now, what are some pros for my jobs and what are some cons, right? Now, of course, it doesn't have to be Microsoft specifically, like you mentioned. Uh, well, one of the pros I would say is be able to learn things every single day and uh, be able to, you know, apply the things that you learn in a real world situation. Um, and the other pro is, you know, yes, the salary can be an option, but heavily I would say is the remote option where you can be able to work anywhere else in the world. I would say one of the cons is sometimes for developers or product managers or dev 
DevOps, machine learning engineer, data engineers, um, you know, we always look at computer all day and health can be a big factor. So I would say that's one of the cons. Sometimes maybe you're on call, maybe you're trying to in a meeting, long meeting, you're trying to debug an issue. Sometimes looking at computer all day can be very, uh, can be very bad. So I would say those are the pros and cons um, when I look at the job of software engineer. I think someone thought that I was talking to them so they yelled back out, but basically what are, how do you stay up to date with technology? So what are some things that you do in order to actively be aware of the new things that are going on? How do I stay up to date with technology? Well, there's a couple of resources. Um, there, for Microsoft, there is a website called Microsoft Learn, and there's also a YouTube channel called Microsoft YouTube channel and Microsoft developer or Azure developers and many, and many, many more. So you can see there's overwhelming of content, but the problem with those resources that sometimes if there is people want to engage, maybe there's an environment issue, maybe there's some patches outdated or something's not working, then, you know, there is no comment and be able to answer them. And sometimes, yes, some videos are live uh, where audience are able to, you know, ask questions during the live session, but sometimes not everyone can be able to make it in the session, right? So it's very hard to learn in my personal opinions through those resources. So what my recommendation is Udemy. Now I'm not sponsored by Udemy or anything, but I personally use Udemy to learn. Uh, there are a lot of comments in each courses and each courses or each video, each lesson, there is a comments section. And usually what happened is that for each course, there is a teacher assistant that help you to answer the questions. And usually there are a lot of people ask questions and there's also answers that you can find in each lesson. Um, I find that very helpful. Sometimes emailing teacher, some teachers, they're really nice to get back to you and teachers do maintain their courses. Sometimes if you look at a course, they're outdated, then maybe that course shouldn't be taken, right? And there's some courses that are updated month by month. So teachers do really take time to, you know, maintain their courses, at least some of them. And also look at the courses that have highest ratings and look at the ratings to see, you know, if this course is good. Okay, so the next thing is, what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out in the software engineering industry or someone who's just looking into getting it through school or their boot camp? So what's the best advice that I can give to someone who's just about to start industry? Well, um, I think one thing that I would say is to have a clear vision about where you want to go in tech because there's so many paths in tech. For example, you can be a individual contributor as a software engineer to become all the way to a staff software engineer or a principal software engineer. Um, and Or you can be going down the manage management route where you can be a software engineer manager um, all the way to a manager's manager or um, all the way to a vice president, right? There's also different path in software engineer. For example, you can be a game developer. You can be a DevOps, be a product manager where you can be able to take full control of a product on the execution or the marketing side of things or so many more. You can also be a sales or a solution architect or a software engineer consultant where you can be able to help companies to succeed, give them advice, give them feedbacks and so on. Um, there's also many other ways in tech that you can succeed. You can also even become a machine learning engineer if you're super into building data models, data science, working with data and so on. There's important to listen to your body and sometimes maybe you're learning something and you're unmotivated, then maybe it's time to take a break and figure out why you want to learn this at the first place and maybe try to explore what's the impact if I learned X, Y, Z. So what are some things to watch out for? Well, that's a really good question. I think the things that I learned are, you know, apply for jobs that have more reputations, right? Or apply to companies that have more reputations or well-established companies. I think that's something that I learned because I used to work at a startup before and the interview process can be very different. Some startups, they might give you an API and you just try to build a front end side of things. Some startup, they might just question or give you a small project to test your knowledge on, do you know how to unit test? Do you know how to work with AWS services? Do you know how to work with Vue.js or whatever, like it was the interview process really specific to the technologies that they're using, the design principles or design uh, software development best practices that they are using. So it's really specific, but I highly recommend that to apply for companies that have more uh, well-established or more reputation. But if you apply for big tech, then the interview process is more well-known, then you will be able to expect algorithm, data structures, system design, behavioral plus culture fits, hacker rank, online assessment, codability, or maybe object-oriented 
design and so on. But all in all, I think it's very important to talk to recruiters to understand the interview process before you proceed further. How do I secure my first job? I think it's very important to be able to grow in that company and also be able to learn a lot of things along the way and be able to prove that you are able to grow with the help of the team and you're able to produce impact and be able to provide value to the company. I think that is a really great way to secure your first job, my, my first job, um, and also be part of the culture and be able to fit in and have the same mission as the company. Thanks so much, Eric, for talking to us today about your journey into software engineering. It was really cool to hear all of your thoughts based on your specific path, which was becoming a self-taught developer. I know a lot of people are kind of looking into that option and I don't really have a lot of career advice there because I went the traditional route. I got my bachelor's degree. So I know that people were probably wanting to hear more insight from you. So thanks again. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to share this video with others and I'll see you next time.